He has risen. Hallelujah. He has risen indeed. Through this recorded, we are united to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. Welcome to our worship service here at First Baptist Church Hingham. On a personal note, there were viewers that perceived my injury last week, and I'll simply confirm that yes, on April 16th, I fell and fractured my fibula. Uh, looks like a cast for the next six to eight weeks, but thankfully at this time, it doesn't look like surgery is needed. Truly with thanksgiving for healing, medical care, and the loving support of friends and family. Our worship service will be as follows. Our call to worship is Psalm 23. The first hymn is Majesty, Worship is Majesty, followed by Guided Prayer. Then the hymn, Give Thanks with a Grateful Heart. The scripture lesson is John 10, 1 through 10. The title of my sermon is Called by Name. Closing hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Hear the reading of God's word as we are called to worship. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come, let us worship the Lord. engulfed with the shadow of death, 
As our shepherd Jesus, we praise you for your love and guidance. We praise your majestic name as the resurrection, conquering death once and for all time. And with grateful hearts, we listen to your voice, guiding us through our journeys without fear. We ask through your gracious love to renew us each day as we receive the care providing for all of our needs at your hand. Amid sickness and death, we, with thanksgiving, ask for your protection and healing. Through faith and hope, renew your spirit of victory within each of us today. We pray for the world, a global community. Let truth, light, and wisdom guide all leadership at every level around the world. We especially pray for the scientists of the COVID-19 virus as they study, searching for the best treatment, and ultimately we pray for a vaccine to protect us against this deadly virus. We pray for all the leaders of the world, again at every level, to make decisions that promote health and well-being that protect all your children, the children of the world. We pray for wisdom, justice, and humility that binds us together in love. And for each of us praying, may we continue to faithfully come into your presence as we remember those that we love, those that we care for, and we speak their names personally, lifting them up before you. Within this church family, we faithfully and persistently pray for some by name. Marion, Bunny, Ruth, and Jenny. With praise and thanksgiving that Jody has completed her cancer treatment, while remembering the following who are continuing to be especially cared for in the medical community. Colleen, Tyler, and Mark. We praise you that Carol's mother and sister are doing better. We pray for Janine, anticipating another surgery to restore her health fully. For each of us, we ask to draw on your strength in our vulnerabilities. Whether it is concern about our health, doubt, spiritual shortcomings, fears, anxiety, anger, or frustrations, let your grace prove to be sufficient in our lives. Spirit of the living God, empower each of us to hear your voice as you guide us down the path of life. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, the resurrection and the life, Jesus, our shepherd guide. Amen.
this morning is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Hear the reading of God's Word. Very, very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them. And when he has brought out his own sheep, he goes ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes in only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. May God add a blessing to this, the reading of Scripture. My sermon title is Called by Name. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Much we need thy tender care. For me, the words of the hymn shared were shared from memory, impressed upon my heart. For Jesus is and is presented as the Good Shepherd as a major theme throughout the Gospels. As Christians moving through these days, we are reminded and we have the opportunity to recommit our lives to follow Jesus as our personal shepherd. Jesus 10 addresses the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, those who had authority over the community controlling the synagogues. What was going on that Jesus would speak directly to the Pharisees? Chapter 9, the one that came before, gives us a context. What happened? Jesus had healed a man who had been blind since he was born. The way that Jesus performed that miracle was literally to squat down and to spit into the dust of the road and to make a paste, to make mud with his own spit and the dust. And then he placed that mud on these man's eyes with the instruction to go to the pool of Siloam and to wash off the mud there. Obediently, the man immediately made his way to that pool. And as he washed off that mud, he began to see. What's the problem? Jesus healed on the Sabbath. He broke the Sabbath law, the letter of the law. Conclusion by the Pharisees, regardless of the man gaining his eyesight, the Pharisees concluded that Jesus had to be a sinner, that Jesus was of Satan. Jesus was trying to misguide and steal away God's children, children of Abraham, children of Moses, children of the law. Chapter 10 was Jesus' response to the Pharisees' accusations. In verses 1 through 6, there are two images, shepherd and gate. The gate represented the owner's entrance. The image is clear. When shepherds were home, they would bring their sheep to the community pen. 
They could leave their sheep safely because there would be one gatekeeper keeping watch over the gate. And when it was time to lead them back to pasture, the shepherd would get permission from the gatekeeper to enter into the pen. And as he entered the pen, he would call out to his sheep. Only thieves or robbers would try to climb over the walls of the pen in order to destroy, in order to steal. How was ownership by each sheep confirmed? The shepherd called the sheep by name. Jesus, the great shepherd, calls each of us by name. Not only did he call them by name, but the sheep heard the shepherd's voice and trusted that voice. I have very, very little experience with sheep personally. Yes, county fairs going and putting your hand into that thick wool, seeing them, the cute lambs, and also visiting in South Dakota where my sister Nancy and her husband Doug lived, Doug being from South Dakota, and living on a farm. I observe sheep at a distance. And what is immediately evident about sheep? Extremely skittish animals. In fact, the way they would herd their sheep from one pasture to another pasture was with a trail bike because the sheep were afraid of the sound of the trail bike, so they'd run away from it, and they could herd them from one place to the other location. The image that Jesus is suggesting couldn't be any more different. Not fear, familial. The sheep heard Jesus' voice. They trusted that voice, and they left the protection of the pen following Jesus. And then once out of the pen, what did the shepherd do? He didn't drive the sheep behind, but it says clearly in the passage, leading in front, the shepherd guided the sheep because the sheep knew his voice, trusted him, and would follow him. What does the pen represent? Figuratively speaking, perhaps leaving tradition, safety, security, that which is familiar. Having been called by name to leave the pen, the sheep followed. The gate represents ownership, the voice, the trusted voice that was immediately followed, leading to where? Pastures. Pastures that sustain life. And we're so familiar with Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The translation of this passage helps us to understand why it continued. Jesus was using a figure of speech when he identified himself as a shepherd and as also the gate. There was no literal fold. There was no literal gate. Followers were not literally sheep. But the Pharisees didn't understand the spiritual lesson. And so Jesus applied these two figures of speech with increased clarity in verses 8 and 9 and 10. Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate. Again, the language is powerful. The I am statement was a clear declaration that Jesus had been sent from God and that he knew already that he spoke for God. I am the gate of the sheep. Robbers break in to destroy. But I am the gate, and whoever enters or exits through me will be saved. They will come in and out and find pasture. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Pasture, grass, life. The intent that Jesus is teaching is clear. The figure of speech is that the gate is the gateway to life, fullness of life, true life that only God can offer. 
and that Jesus is the guide in and out and through that gate. True life. Whatever we feed on, is it life-giving? If true, then we see the power of God demonstrated in our life. See, the demonstration that Jesus was speaking the truth was in the sign and the seal of a miracle. A man born blind had been healed. Truth. A sign from God that Jesus was his messenger to the people who had eyes to see and ears to hear. To the people who were willing to follow Jesus' voice. How do we hear Jesus' voice today? Again, we pray, be still and know that I am God. There is oftentimes those moments in our life in the stillness when we have those aha insights and we realize, yes, this is truth. This is what I believe. For many of us, we may not or we may remember the moment when we accepted Jesus as our Savior, when it went from an intellectual presentation that Jesus was the one who could forgive our sins, could forgive us and then restore and give us life and assure that not only life on this earth, but on the world to come. That aha moment where it went from an intellectual understanding to a heart acceptance and deep personal belief and a commitment to become a follower of Jesus, to follow his voice. Recently, during the pandemic, I've been reaching out and talking to various people within circles of family and friends, but especially people connected to our church. And there was one individual who shared the details of when they started to participate at the church. And they indicated that there was an opportunity, and they turned and said, yes, I want to go in, and I want to participate. And I asked them, about that and what that moment was. And they weren't quite sure what I was getting at when I replied and said, that was a moment you experienced the still, small voice of God. And you said, yes. One of the verses in scripture is, on your word I meditate day and night. I do not know any other way of training our hearts to hear the voice of Jesus than to think and to study. As we study, we have those aha moments where the truth rings and there's a clarity of truth like a bell within our heart. And we realize this, I believe. And we choose to follow that teaching. We listen to Jesus' voice. In the midst of this pandemic, we are challenged as a global community. The question, the ancient question, what is true? I'm going to use some specific illustrations. Freedom. Freedom to choose to be obedient to God, to be obedient to the Spirit. Freedom. Freedom to protest. Is it Jesus' voice that we're following? For all of us who saw the media, the images are powerful. In the state of Michigan, to be carrying assault weapons to intimidate the seated representatives while carrying banners of hatred. Freedom? Technically, they didn't break the law. But at what cost? And is that freedom anything that could be imagined being guided by Jesus, the shepherd king? Freedom to work. Industry, work, providing for our families. An important dynamic in our lives. And we do our labor as an offering to God 
with grateful hearts for the blessings of being able to work and to provide. And yet, when we choose to work, is it free and fair to put our neighbors at risk? There's a verse in Acts that I think applies to this. Paul was out preaching the gospel, and as was his practice, he always went to the synagogues first. There was one synagogue that responded in this way. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. They examined scriptures every day to see what was being taught to them was true. In the days of the pandemic, may we also eagerly study to discern truth, study to hear Jesus' voice guiding our lives. As Christians, we are Jesus' sheep. He has called us by name. How do we tune our hearts to hear Jesus' voice. We study, we meditate, we pray, and we listen. We listen and seek Jesus' guidance in all areas of our life. No exceptions. As Christians, this is our highest calling. To love God, to love our neighbor, to both ask God's forgiveness and freely offer forgiveness, to go the extra mile, even to love and pray for our enemies. God loved the world so much that he sent his son Jesus. Can we, Jesus followers, do any less? We have been called by Jesus. We have heard his voice. And now we desire to follow and to live life to the fullest as God provides. Amen.